Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Pulse Signal Generation. In this short presentation, we'll provide both an overview of pulse signals, as well as explain the different ways that pulse signals can be created using signal generators. Before we get started, it would be a good idea to define what we mean by a pulse signal. One possible way of defining pulse signals is to say that a pulse signal is a signal whose amplitude alternates between a zero and a non-zero level. It's important to keep in mind when we look at diagrams like this that what we're really looking at is the envelope of an RF carrier that's being switched on and off. Pulse signals have three different sets of characteristics or parameters, namely the pulse envelope, that is the amplitude or shape of the pulse, pulse timing, or how far apart the pulses are, and pulse modulation, or what happens with the frequency and or phase of the carrier during the pulse. Let's start with pulse envelope. How do we define or quantify a pulse envelope? Although we've been showing pulses having simple rectangular envelopes that can be defined using only pulse width, real pulses have shapes that are not perfect rectangles. This means that we either define, or our generator defines, pulse rise time and fall time. Many pulses exhibit some level of overshoot or ringing. And there are additional parameters like droop, ripple, etc. that occur in real world pulses. In all cases, however, it's the specific application that determines which of these parameters need to be defined and their respective values. In addition to the shape of the pulses, we also need to define the timing between the pulses. The spacing between pulses can be uniform, that is, all the pulses are the same distance apart, or non-uniform, where the spacing between pulses can be different from pulse to pulse. When generating uniformly spaced pulses, we simply need to define this fixed interval. The most common way of doing this is by defining the pulse repetition interval, or PRI, in units of seconds. You'll also sometimes see this as pulse repetition frequency, or PRF, which is expressed in Hertz. PRF is simply the reciprocal of PRI. In the case of non-uniformly spaced pulses, that is, pulses that are not all spaced the same distance apart, we usually use some kind of list, or function, that defines the intervals between the pulses. We mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that we usually depict the envelope of a pulse, that is the magnitude of the RF carrier over time. What the pulse envelope doesn't show is the frequency and phase of the carrier during the pulse. If the frequency and phase of the carrier are constant over the duration of the pulse, this is called an unmodulated pulse. However, there are many cases where we do want to change the frequency, and or the phase, of the carrier during the pulse, and this is what we refer to as pulse modulation or modulation on pulse. Why use pulse modulation? Pulse modulation is most often used in radar applications, where the length of the pulse is very important. If we want high precision in making distance or range measurements, or if we want to separate closely spaced targets, we need to use shorter pulses. However, using shorter pulses is difficult for a number of reasons, such as the need for higher peak power. By modulating the RF carrier during the pulse, we can use longer pulses to get the same performance as shorter pulses. This is why pulse modulation is sometimes also called pulse compression. As we mentioned a moment ago, pulse modulation involves changing the frequency or phase of the pulse. Changing the frequency or phase of the pulse makes it easier to detect and correlate them. What are our options when it comes to generating pulses? Both analog and vector signal generators can be used to create pulse signals, but there are important differences between them. Generally speaking, analog signal generators can only create unmodulated pulses, although some types of basic pulse modulation, like linear FM or chirped pulses, may also be possible. The timing or spacing of pulses generated by analog signal generators is usually fixed for single pulses or pairs of pulses, but on some instruments it's possible to create an arbitrary train of unmodulated pulses, each with a different width and spacing. Pulses from analog signal generators can be made using either the instrument's internal pulse generator or an external generator. And, as you might expect, pulses from an analog signal generator usually have excellent spectral purity. If you're looking for very rectangular pulses, an analog signal generator is usually the best choice. Vector signal generators, on the other hand, provide the same functionality as analog signal generators when it comes to pulses. Once we move from unmodulated rectangular pulses to pulses with more complex envelopes, and especially modulated pulses, a vector signal generator becomes a requirement. 
Vector signal generators can be used to create sequences of pulses with any desired pulse spacing, and even to create pulses that appear to come from a source with a user-defined antenna pattern and antenna scan. Note, however, that these kinds of complex pulses are normally not created directly on the instrument, but special software is used to define these pulses, sequences, scenarios, etc. And this information is then used to create an arbitrary waveform file containing the pulse signal. Another way that pulses can be created using a vector signal generator is using something called pulse descriptor words, which are a short lists of parameters that define the main features of a pulse. If you're interested in learning more about some of these advanced topics, please refer to the separate presentations for each one of these topics. So in summary, we define pulses as signals that alternate between a zero and a non-zero level, usually on a repeating basis. Although pulses are bursts of radio frequency energy, we typically represent pulses by their amplitude envelope. Recall that the underlying RF carrier may be modulated or unmodulated. Pulse modulation is commonly found in radar systems in order to obtain the benefits of shorter pulses using longer duration pulses. We can create pulse signals in two main ways. Analog signal generators are most often used to create simple unmodulated pulses, and they do this with very high fidelity and signal purity. Vector signal generators, on the other hand, are needed to create most types of complex or modulated pulses. This includes both emulating real-world pulse signals from antennas, as well as both moving and stationary emitters. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Pulse Signal Generation. Thanks for watching.